Hi there, I'm Mr. Mahuda, the art maker, and what I'd really like to do is make all you nice people out there art makers too. And it can happen. We've got some wonderful lessons coming this year. I know a lot of you are going to, you like sculpture, paper sculpture, you like mobiles, we'll be doing that. I know you always like clay. We've got, you know, some lessons there with animals and plaques and some nice projects for the holidays. Well, just stick along with me. We're going to have a lot of fun. First of all, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about brushes. Let me show you a batch that I have here. Your school has all kinds of brushes, and I don't know, which, you know what school has which, but look at these for a moment. Here's a stiff bristle brush that's good, good for dry brush painting. It's really an oil painting brush, and here's one of my lettering brushes, flat on the end. That's special there. Look at the little tiny one, which has a number two on it. Hmm. And here's my brush that I'm going to use today, free brush, number 10. It's really a watercolor brush. And here's another one that's flat on the end, good for painting glazes on, uh, on clay, and also for making buildings, when painting buildings, because you can get some nice square lines. Well, you have different brushes, too, at your school, and you'll need, you know, be using different ones. Let's get to, you know, right to it, the brush we're going to use today. A brush I love. I love this brush. This brush comes to a real natural point. The people who made it put all the hair so the point, you know, the hair would come right to a nice point. And I call it free brush because as you see me painting, you're going to see the real nice free strokes I can possibly make. Uh, I think possibly I named it the free brush, but the thing is, it's really a watercolor brush. Watch now what I do. I've got my brush full of water. I'm going to go down and practice with white paint. Dip into it and go all the way up. And fill all those hairs with all that paint right to the neck of the brush. That's where the metal part starts here. Now I'm scraping it off because now what I'm going to do is let you see the shape of it. And I want to paint now only with the very, very tip. Now to do so, I'm going to hold the brush down here by this neck here and lower the brush until just the tip of the point touches. Lower it down. And when it does, then I'm going to move my whole arm and make that nice thin line. You see how I did that? I know that if you were to take over here and do it in such a way where you held the brush higher, as you would go along, your arm might bounce up and down. Now, that doesn't mean it's a wrong stroke. It just means that you, the stroke is not even the way you do it when you have a good control by having your wrist on the paper. Now, see, I could take the brush, go away from me. See how nice it is to make branches and stems and so forth like that with the very tip of the brush. Now I'd like to show you how the, the brush works at its full thickness. This brush being a number 10 allows me a certain thickness because of the number of hairs in there. Not only 10 hairs, but hundreds probably. But now I put the brush down, wiggle it back and forth, and aim the handle right towards me, and then slowly I pull it down the paper, and that is one thickness of line. Now I know a lot of times when you folks We'll do a painting. You may make two lines, then go back and you paint in between these two lines. But notice this brush can do it all by itself that way. If ever you needed a thicker line than that, of course, what you would do then, is maybe your school would have brush number 14 or 16, you see. All right. Now I get to a stroke that I find is one of the most beautiful in the world. I love this one, and I, that's the reason why I love this, this brush. It's going to be a thick and thin stroke. And what I want you to see how I make it. Pretend that my hand here is the tabletop and the brush, I'm holding it low. I let the tip touch. Then as I start to go along, I push down with my fingers and lift up. Down and up. But at the same time while I'm doing that, I'm also pulling my arm. So watch this stroke now. Probably the most beautiful one in art. Tip down. Pull my arm. Press down. And lift up. Ah, isn't that great? Look at that. Thin, thick. How about that? Now, that stroke is one that you can practice over and over many, many times, and you'll use it in many ways. They look like leaves. They look like airplanes. They look like uh, uh, fancy cars. Any number of things you'll see as you start to work with that stroke. Now, the brush itself also has another shape to it. It's the way you look at your brush this way and it has sort of a football shape. Now what I'll do then is just take the brush and set it down on the side and turn it around. I'm turning my brush and turning my arm as I do this. 
Now you have to do that with your arm and your brush as you go along because I don't want you to take and turn your paper as you go along. What if you were painting on the wall in your school, you know, a mural or something of that sort, you really couldn't turn that wall around. <laughs> okay, just watch for a second how pretty this is when I hook the two units together. Here's a skinny line, and lay it there. And you've seen some plants that have leaves on there like that. Now you can see why we call it free brush. Each stroke that I've made so far is a part of a picture all by itself already. Good. Now I can use my brush also. Using the tip, watch, I'll just sort of pretend I'm nervous. Da -da 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 over here. <laughs> and bounce it up and down. I stop because my wrist is hitting the paper. But if ever I want a stipple effect, or I want a whole bunch of polka dots, that would be real good. You see, that, that could be probably a part of a tree, something like that. All right. Your brush also does all kind of painting. Since I happen to have that there, I'll come right down. For all you folks who live in the snowy climes, there's a nice tree with snow on it. And I just bounce my brush, not so much with the tip, but more or less now with the side. And then since I happen to have this hill here, I'll take the brush and do what we call a glazing stroke, pulling it on the side, and it looks like it's running out of paint, and I get that effect. Now, of course, although I'm showing you a few strokes, you can go and try any number of other strokes you would like to, to see how your brush works. And that's what you have to do. Just discover how that brush can work for you. And if you learn these, you're going to become quite an artist. Uh, I want to take and show you just now two more strokes where I mix paint in the brush, OK? My brush is full with white paint. Go to the black and push in and pull back out. Now, I've got two colors in the brush. Pat it down. There we go. Pennsylvania Dutch people decorate their furniture in this style. Isn't that pretty how the colors mix up together? You see, if I were to take this brush now and draw it down here and let the two colors mix, the black and white in the brush mix up and make up a gray for me. Another stroke that goes along with this now, wash my brush out, go down and get some white. This time, I will lay my brush down in the black paint sideways. Now I have white and black in the brush. And as I make this stroke, watch now. Half black and half white. Look at that beautiful natural shading that I get. See that beautiful looking animal here? I'm making it up. Never saw an animal like this before in my life, but there he goes. And here's his leg down here and his leg. Mm-hmm. See how we have free brush? Look at his tail. <laughs> now, I'll wash this brush out, and I'm going to turn the paper over. And you would be doing the same thing when you paint your picture. I, I know some of that will smear a little bit when you turn it over. But the thing is, I want you to be able to take your practice strokes home with you so that your parents can see how you did your picture. And by the way, I'll show you our study guide. And here's the art maker booklet has all the different practice strokes in there for you. And so teacher will have this, and you can look at how the lesson is done and so forth, and remember how the strokes are done, right? OK. Now, in doing the picture, sometimes I'll use the paint straight, sometimes I'll mix it. And you watch me as I start to work. What did you see on the other side as I was working with those beautiful strokes? Yes, I saw a bird, too. So let me go down now and get the white paint. I'll make one with straight white here first the tip of the nose, push down, and pull that way. Look at that, OK? I'll get some yellow into the brush, mix it around a little bit so it'll flow off my brush properly. And I add a second stroke right along to it. All right, just in case some of you can't see it real well, I'll just go down, get a little bit of darker color with it. You see how I can blend those together? OK, there's my bird. Anytime you need to, you wash out your brush. And some, some other times here. Now, I'll take and get the white paint in the brush. And watch what I will do. I'll go down and get half my brush full of red. Because the second bird I'll make here. 
So here he is like that, a second stroke to go along with him. There we are. <laughs> and since I happen to have that, let's see, a little bit of crown up on top. Anytime you want, you can go back and make it lighter, darker, and so forth. Um, remember that real pretty stroke where I had the two colors in my brush? I'll go and get some yellow and dip it down in the black real quickly, because now as I go along with my bird's tail, there we go. Look at that fancy tail. Mm -hmm. I like that. Let's see. Let's add that to my other bird here, too. They're part of a family. Hmm? Oh, I didn't forget. No, I hear you saying it. <laughs> a wing. There, I'll put a wing there. Wing there. Black wing black-winged bird of some sort. Little polka dots on the top of the crowns. And now, by using my white and gray, a little bit of red, mix up some colors to see if you can come up with a kind of a brown you may like. I'll take the brush, and remember that stroke I showed you on the side now? I'm just swishing the brush along, going behind the birds, making branches and so forth like that. Yes, <laughs> you're wondering where I was going to hook the bird, right? <laughs> I can put some highlights on it, but let me just take and, using my yellow, go down the bottom here now. I need to have a little white in that so you can see it better. There, it's hooked onto the, the branch. Here's the leg here. All right. You need some highlights on your, your branches a little bit. You can mix and try your colors out in different kinds of ways. Go back and put a, here, I'll get a little whiter color. Oh yes, you want to have something else on your um, tree, leaves and so forth, you can do that. See how I'm just adding in a kind of real free brush stroke way, these different kinds of lines. <laughs> yes, I hear. Remember that one pretty stroke? Let me take the white, and with the red, I can go along up here, put some flowers. Yes. See all the strokes you can go ahead and use. Isn't that neat? Go back and put another color on top. Boy, I love the lesson like this, where you can just go ahead and try all the different things. Uh, here's the center of the flowers. Put some little black dots in here for the center of the flowers. See, I'm using the brush as a real free brush, painting as I go along. Hmm. All right, little shadow. All right. I know you're going to love free brush. I know that you folks over here are going, hey, there goes my song. We're going to see you again next time with a whole bunch of real fine lessons, right? <laughs> Come on back. We'll see you.